Okay, so here's what happened. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's very important to understand that he created everything. Adam and Eve were put in the garden, and they had, they were perfect as far as God made them to be perfect, but they weren't as perfect as God. So here comes Satan, right? So Satan said, did God really say that you can't have any fruit? And Eve said, well, we can have, you know, we can we may eat of all the fruit of the garden except for that one fruit. And if we touch it, we will die. Now, some people say that, that's, that Satan lied. No, Satan is a great legalist. Before, he's an angel that comes before God. And what it is, is that he wants to make sure that very legally, he will not make a mistake when he speaks. So let's go over what God said first to see if Satan lied. God say in the day that you eat of that fruit, eat, not touch, eat, you will surely die. So Eve said, if we touch it, if we touch the fruit, we will die. Do you understand what's going on here? Satan uses this opportunity to, see, to deceive Eve but does not lie before God. He's following the law. Satan is following the law of God, but yet, in his heart, he knows that it's deceiving Eve. So he is lying, but he's not lying with his tongue. He says to Eve, you will not surely die. If, so she touches the fruit, right? She's got the fruit in her hand, and she's not dead. Got it? I thought I would die if I touched it. Eve didn't know what God really said, and Satan knew that. Eve was told, probably thought in her head, I better not touch that fruit. But God specifically said that in the day you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. But then Satan plants a seed in her head. First, Satan says, did God really say you can't have any fruit? So basically, Eve is thinking in her head, who's this God to hold back the one fruit? She could have everything else, but what do you want? You want what you can't have. When somebody puts a rule over your head, you want to, to have what you can't have. It's, it's great psychology. You think Satan's not a good liar? He's a great liar. He's great at making you, he doesn't even have to lie with his tongue, he's making you fall. And so, it fits with the idea that when God brought one law, don't eat of the fruit of the law, and you will live. Because the, law, the fruit of the knowledge of the good and evil was the fruit of the law. Right? They were under grace, they were under Christ. They were under, they, were, they, they didn't have a law, so, so the tree of life... Jesus Christ is a symbol of what it's like to be without the law. So what, what does eating of the law look like? Self-perfectionism. You see, if you eat of the fruit of the law, you're saying that you have to be as good as God. <laughs> and you have to exalt yourself. And so, so what is the fruit that they ate of? The same fruit that the Pharisees eat of. They had the laws of Moses, but they weren't looking at the sacrifices that, that freed them from the law. They didn't have the whole picture. They were still, the, the law is good. It's a great thing. The law, the fruit that they ate of was a good fruit, but they're not perfect as God. But now it's the, the ever, it's the quest for you to become perfect. This is why the Tower of Babel was built, man exalting himself up. Now take a look at the Pharisees. The Pharisees were a sect of Jews that were, came out of Babylon. Remember the Jews were carried into Babylon. Babylon's where the tower was built. The Jews, the Pharisees, and their Kabbalists today are not influenced by true Christianity. They had their religion tainted by Babylon. 
Babylon was the fruit of knowledge, and, and their Jewishness went right along with self-perfectionism. By the way, Gnosticism had this asceticism where you were making yourself perfect because no man is perfect before God. Right? So now we have James, who was the brother of Jesus. Now, he wouldn't be in the priesthood because he's of the line of Judah. Okay? The Pharisees were, were a sect, maybe the tribe of Benjamin, like, you know, Paul was. But here you have a sect of Jews that the Christ comes, the fruit, that is the answer to the fruit of your self-perfectionism. And what do they want? They want to keep their self-perfectionism. You see what it is, is man making himself perfect. Now take a look at your walk with Lordship Salvation. Isn't it you trying to get rid of your sins and become perfect? Instead of understanding that Adam and Eve were perfect without trying to make themselves as perfect as God? See this? They were in the garden and they were naked and they didn't have any problems. There was no law over them. They didn't have any problem with lust because they were married. Okay, They didn't have any problem with stealing because they had everything they needed. They probably never thought of sin once at all until this fruit of your own self-perfectionism caused them to, be, to stumble and caused hatred and caused people to exalt themselves over other people because we weren't meant for the fruit of perfection yet. We weren't meant for that. That fruit that was in the garden was a fruit that was poison to us because we would use it to exalt ourselves. This is what Satan did. He exalted himself to have it. We didn't understand our place as his children. And I believe that, that God wanted that to happen on purpose so that this whole scenario would play out so that we would come back under the fruit and understand grace. And so that when the heavenly realm opens up, and we walk in the kingdom of heaven, we understand the difference between legalism and love. And that's why we had to go through this whole thing. Because we would have been like Satan. Satan didn't know legalism. He was legal as all get-go. He was the most legal, legal angel there was. He's the persecutor, the prosecutor, if you will. And that's... But the problem is, is that the prosecutor ate his own fruit. The fruit of being the prosecutor of God made him exalt himself. There was no grace involved. It was a whip. And he, made, he brought that whip to man by letting them have that fruit. So the answer is not you trying to self-perfect yourself. That's walking in the flesh. Yes, you do add to these things, but you have to, walk, you have to understand that self-perfectionism is unattainable. You have to let go of your control and understand that you can walk in Christ. And I'm not talking about sinning on purpose. I'm talking about when you look at the Savior, love comes out of you and it fulfills the law. Because how, what is the law? Love. Love, thy name, love your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. How can you do that if you haven't been loved first? If you don't understand grace, you can't love God. If you're in the law trying to self-perfect yourself, you can't love God. You can't love other people. So you can't follow the law because you just broke it. But when the chain is broken, when you know love, love comes out of your heart for your fellow man and for God. More love than you ever could imagine because you know you were saved. Jesus Christ is the fruit of life. The Pharisees and James and his fruit was the fruit of death. And that was what Paul was saying. And it's beautiful. So live in it. God bless.